This is Fun Fun Function, a Monday morning show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas and having fun. So I do realize the irony when I say that today I want to talk about how I try to remember that programming isn't really important. It is solving problems for people that is important. I'm trying out doing this uh, episode walking outside, partially because I really needed to get out of the house. Since I started YouTubing, I have watched a lot of videos where filmmakers talk about what kind of camera gear they use. It is remarkably similar to how programmers show other programmers how their tooling setup works and how they work with a certain framework and stuff. But there is one very, very interesting difference. They almost always start out by saying that it doesn't matter what camera you're using. You don't need a fancy camera to make a good movie. What matters is the story that you're telling. Over, over the last few months, I have developed a serious man crush on a guy called Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat is a scary productive videographer. He did an HBO show a couple of years ago and he now does this amazing video blog that he posts every single day at 8 a.m. sharp. Case is interesting because it's uh, he, he often says that he doesn't like video production. He likes telling stories and video production is just a way for him to do that. For example, he uses uh, Final Cut Pro X to edit his videos and uh, it's a tool that he is constantly frustrated with and feels limited by, but he doesn't want to take time away from making movies just in order to learn a new piece of software. I am shit at this. Every time I start a new project, I end up being frustrated with some part of my tooling and uh, I end up starting this sub project within the project where I, where I start creating a new piece of tooling. It takes away time from the main project, but I rationalize it and say that, well, it's gonna save me time in the long run. But while the tool in question often makes me a little bit more effective, it is in no way even close to making up for the time that I spent making the tool. Hey, look at this. It is, it is slightly smaller than my last apartment in Stockholm. I don't wanna put this down too much. I mean, somebody has to create tools. Git, Lodash, uh, Rails and uh, Express and whatnot. These are all tools that I've used or, or use today and I enjoy them. And I appreciate that somewhere along the line, somebody just went, I am not going to take the shortest route to solving this problem using existing tools. No, I am going to spend hundreds of hours creating something that is slightly better, a new solution, and I'm going to share it with everyone. I appreciate that and I, and I benefit from the fruits of that labor, I do. But I notice that I have this tendency to over glorify the, uh, the development organizations of Twitter and Facebook and, and Google because they have these, all these popular frameworks that are used by people like Bootstrap and Angular and, and React. And I don't wanna put that down. <laughs> Again, I don't wanna put that down, but, <clears throat> oh, how do I put this? They're not the best examples of companies delivering actual innovation targeted at consumers anymore. Google has not created a product like AdSense or Gmail for a very long time. Hangouts, that's an acquisition. Uh, Facebook Messenger, that's an acquisition. Tesla, Uber, Square, Slack, Snapchat, Oculus, Airbnb. We need to remember that the most interesting stuff created nowadays, it, it isn't created inside of the tech giants. I think that we as programmers could be a little bit better at glorifying or giving some love to uh, programmers that are very good and productive at making, you know, for for lack of a better word, uh, real things, uh, not 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 just developer tooling. I think a great example of such a programmer is Jonathan Blow. He's the creator of uh, Braid, which is which is an amazing game 
But what is more amazing is that he made it almost single-handedly in three years, which is amazingly productive considering the quality and the scope of the game. Jonathan Blow is definitely a person that does something right when it comes to producing software. I have referred to this before, but I really think that you should listen to his talk how to uh, program independent games. Uh, it is, he thinks about programming a, in a pretty different way and he made me question a lot of the assumptions that I have around programming. So, the moral of this snowy and cold and damp rant is that try to be more excited about the problem that you are solving rather than your craft. Because while programming is important and awesome, it is just a tool. As usual, the next episode of Fun Fun Function will be released on Monday morning, 0800 GMT time. Do not miss it, watch it for breakfast. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.